Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Cowgirl Kate here. And as you can see, the Pocket Watch Pixie is very nearly finished. Happy day. Um, I had just finished attaching the chains here and thought, well, if people would have questions on how that was done, it would be best to address that before I'm all finished with it because it's just easier to show than it is to explain and um, you know that way everybody who has any questions you know I can walk them through the process and they'll know right what to do if you know they decide to add the chains um, I'm using invisible beading thread as you can, as you cannot see huh? but uh, I have already anchored it to some threads on the back and knotted it around so it's good and secure um, the chains that I have chosen, uh, this was just a length of copper colored jewelry chain that I found actually at Walmart just a few days ago. I kind of got lucky, I guess, but, um, it was in different lengths and I just cut it to the length I wanted. Uh, this one is uh, 14 inches long and this one over here is 16 inches long. Now, if you had uh, an old necklace or an old anklet, they would certainly work. Um, you know, it's just kind of whatever you would like to add to, you know, have this if you decide to put chain on, it's really up to you what kind you have. Um, my first choice for this was actually an old ankle bracelet that I had in my jewelry box. The only thing that it did not match was it had turquoise beads on it, and there's no turquoise on her, but filing that away for future reference, um, that's a very easy, blingy resource for maybe in the future. Um, once you have your chain cut or the necklace that you want, you know, you would take off the findings at the end, like the clasp and such. But anyway, um, you'll see here I've anchored each end of it with pins down to the dress. And I would recommend also that you do that as well. Um, it just it helps to keep it in place while you're attaching it. And not only that, you may decide that you want the drape to hang differently. You might like it tighter. Um, and not so much like a, you know, like this is kind of very, very drapey. I mean, you might like it where it's pulled up tighter, you know. It's just, it's all up to you. But the easiest way to um, determine how you want it is to attach the ends first. Um, and you can certainly use longer lengths of chain. Um, you would still attach the ends first and longer chain is just going to make these loops hang down more you know that's all that's going that's all that's going to affect so really if you wanted them to hang all the way down you certainly could you know it's just whatever your preference would be so let's get into attaching this chain before the pins give way on me Now here's where it gets kind of dicey because I always pull the pin down instead of the needle. There we go. And I'm just going to get a couple of stitches in before I take the pin out and that way I know where it needs to go before I take that pin out and it's not going to slide around so bad so my apologies if my camera angles are weird uh, again this is not the best um, system I guess I want to say you're going to want to put in quite a few stitches just to make sure 
that these chains aren't going to move around because it's not that they're very heavy, but they do move, you know, and until she gets framed, that's going to be an issue that they could get, you know, bounced around or whatever, and the weight of them could snag on something or loosen them. So you want to make sure that you have quite a few stitches in there. And I'm going to come back and do a few more on there um, after I get everything kind of finalized where it needs to go. But these are just kind of the, the tacking stitches. Um, now I'm using the invisible thread. I'm sure Nymo would work great for this. Um, if you're going to use sewing thread, um, I would recommend to double, double strand it on your needle for doing these chains. Um, cotton floss might work. Um, I'm not too sure if they would be tough enough, if you know what I mean. Um, and they might cover up the chain more than what you want. But if that was the case, you know, you could certainly just put a bead over it or something. I mean, what the heck, it's not going to hurt nothing. Okay, now, and you can really, you know, pull and manipulate those chains so that they lay nice. But I'm going to come up here and hoping that my camera I better check. I can hardly see it from this angle, but I'm hoping that my camera is picking this up. And for the loop part up here where it's anchored, you're going to want a pin in each um, length of chain to hold it because that it's so heavy that just one pin it just kind of falls out and you have to start all over <laughs> there again I'm grabbing every one but the one I need Yeah, here's where it gets kind of dicey. There we go. All right, and I'm just going to secure each link or length of chain or whatever with a stitch. And then I can take out these pins and get it going. Okay, I'm going to have to take one of these out. There we go. Okay. Now, you'll see here that um, both of the chain uh, lengths have had their own um, link finished in or sewed down and that's because if you try to go through both of them it's going to be too high and the, the cog isn't going to sit down nearly as nice you, you, you know the goal is to try to get it as flat as you can so that the cog isn't sitting up so high and they are going to sit up rather high and not be flush down on the fabric and that's just because the chain is there now for what I have sewn on this so far, I'm going to come back and do some more, but this is a little trick. And if you come over and into the metallics of her wing, um, I'm using the invisible thread, so whatever shine it has isn't going to show up in the metallics. It would in the floss probably, but in the metallics it's fine, and I'm just going to 
make a little stitch just to kind of anchor what I have done already before I come up and do the the cog on top of this chain bundle. Now the, the gear that I've chosen is just a smaller version of this one. I got this and they were in a set from Michaels. They were in the scrapbooking section and they were just a little more bigger and detailed than the ones that she has on her wings and I chose the bigger one for out here because it's a negative space and it draws your eye and kind of fills up that gap but over here I needed something smaller because she's got a lot going on with her wings and it would just kind of help to you know uh, have something still like this one but smaller so it's not overpowering everything that's going on in her wing. There is a method to the madness, I guess. And now I'm just going to kind of tack this down right over the top of that chain. And however you want to position the gears, you know, that's fine. I like to get them a little bit off center myself just to kind of give it the more of a motion look. And if you'll notice, there's a lot of them that just, they point in all different directions. And that's just simply because it looks like they're working. You'll want to play with the chain a bit. Make sure it's, you know, laying nicely. Of course, it's going to move around before you actually get her to frame. But at least this way, you're not sewing it down. And it'll be some funky way forever. Or at least until you, you know, fix that. And now, um... They're laying, it's laying down a little better now. But and for these bigger gears, I've been kind of securing them all the way around, not just in the center, just because it's helping to hold them down. They are a rather big object, and I don't want them to slide around. Okay, well, that looks pretty. That'll do. Okay. All right, and I'm pretty much near the end of my of this beading thread that I feel comfortable using. So what I'll do next is um, I would flip her over. I'm just going to take these pins out so they don't fall down. So next I'm just going to flip her over, find the needle here, ah, oh, you get to see the messy back. Okay, and I'm going to come up here, her floss, make sure that my camera's doing this right, sorry if I'm bouncing these around. I'm just going to run it under some thread back here. Not too much, but just enough that I can get a good foundation around there. Okay. Now 
I'm going to kind of pull it pull it a bit snug because you don't you want it snug that it's going to hold everything but you don't want it too tight that it's going to you know pop pop holes in your fabric from all the tension and you just loop it through a couple times and pull it up tight Run it through the loop a couple of times and it'll hold it really well. I just have to grab my scissors, sorry. Okay, I'm probably going to make another length of beading thread to go over this again just to make sure they're secured, you know, good and, good and firmly. And um, that's all there is to attaching the chains and the little gears that go on top of them. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to ask. Um, I, I'm more than willing to help anybody, you know, work their way through it. You know, she's a... She's kind of a liberating design because I want to encourage the stitcher to find their own treasures, make her unique as far as what they add to her, you know, have fun with her. You know, that's what this hobby is about. So anyway, that is a, a quick little behind the scenes on how to attach the chains. Um, now if a person wanted, they could add, um, you know, the little crystals like you see, you know, down here the bottom of her dress. A uh, person could add these kinds of crystals or beads like up in the chains. Um, that would be very beautiful. Um, you know, there's no law says you can't. Um, if I decide to do any of that, I'm going to wait until I get her completely finished. She still has some stuff that goes up here just to kind of round her out. And, um, she might possibly, potentially, have a length of chain. I just, uh, it hasn't come in the mail yet, but I'm, I was debating that for the pocket watch to have a chain as well. So we'll just see what, what happens. If, uh, if it's too big or doesn't really work, then I'm just going to skip it, and then I would bead up in here like the rest of her gown and I think that would be very pretty um, we'll just see we'll just see I've been taking pictures of all the options and um, I need to figure out how to do pictures in the videos because I think that would probably help a lot of people figure out what they would like to do for her so anyway I want to thank you for watching uh, next time you see her she should be completely finished so, thanks again. Bye.